So next, we're going to go into the FTIR lab. And I'd like to introduce you to Ryan. He's another one of our scientists here at the Downers Grove Tech Center. Hi, Ryan. Hey, Jill. How are you doing? Can you give us a little bit of a quick overview of the various instruments in here, maybe starting with the, uh, these instruments right here? Sure. So here we have the Spectrum 2 and Spectrum 2N FTIR instruments. As you can see, these instruments have a very small footprint, but on top of that, they incorporate several technologies which make them both uh, you know, high quality, uh, performing high quality measurements as well as a very low maintenance instrument. So the Spectrum 2 and 2N benefit from what we call the optics guard technology, which protects the critical internal optical components with desiccant packs that we warranty for three years from the factory and which tend to last much longer in the field. So it makes it a very low maintenance instrument. These instruments are avail available in dedicated single range formats. So the Spectrum 2 performs measurements in the mid-infrared spectral range. Spectrum 2N performs measurements in the near-infrared range. Both of these instruments, as well as our other FTIR instruments, are compatible with our own Perkin Elmer branded sampling accessories, which meet a variety of analytical needs. But on top of that, we pro uh, partnered with several third-party vendors to make a wider range of sampling accessories available so that these instruments can meet any variety of analytical challenges. So, um, you know, I, I understand mid-infrared and near-infrared. Can mm -hmm. you uh, give a little bit of an example? Um, I want to analyze hand sanitizer. I would use mid-infrared for that, correct? That's right, yeah. So the analysis of hand sanitizer is very well done in the mid-infrared spectral range. It's very quick and easy to perform the analysis because you can use the ATR sampling technique. So for this measurement, a few drops of the liquid are simply placed on the ATR crystal for the measurement. The system can also be calibrated to quantify uh, the ethanol content of okay. a variety of hand sanitizer formulations. So, uh, so when we were in the, in the chromatography lab and uh, Alan was talking a little bit about using the GC mass spec for hand sanitizer, this is something that maybe is a quicker analysis and does it complement it or how would you talk about the differences? So the GC instrumentation is very well suited to analysis of trace impurities. So looking for those contaminants which are present at very low concentrations, either in the raw ingredients or in the finished formulation. Okay. That's a place where GC is fantastic. Okay. Infrared is fantastic as a screening tool, making sure that you have the proper material. Oftentimes in settings where uh, customers work with very large volumes of sample, uh, they need a quick turnaround on the analysis. They need to make sure that there hasn't been some mix-up in shipping that okay. causes them to receive the incorrect material. Right. Perfect. Okay. Um, so, you know, let's move over to you know, some of these. Um, these instruments, it looks like, yes, they, a lot of them have microscopes attached to them. That's right. So maybe um, talk a little bit about what we have going on here with uh, an IR with a microscope and how Certainly. we can actually utilize the microscope for um, looking at not only impurities, but multi-layer laminates and things like that, maybe paint chips, uh, um, packaging, et cetera. Certainly. Yeah, so either of our uh, FTIR uh, benches that we sell can be interfaced with an infrared microscope, whether it is the Spectrum 2 or the Spectrum 3 FTIR. Perkin Elmer has a variety of microscope options to perform a variety of analyses uh, tailored to perform certain applications very well while also meeting certain uh, customers' budgets. So here we see the Spotlight 200 uh, infrared microscope coupled to our Spectrum 2 FTIR. And then over here we have the Spotlight 400 coupled to our Spectrum 3 FTIR. So the Spotlight 200 provides a sort of uh, point and shoot analysis where in situations where customers encounter point defects, small particles, uh, debris, fibers, etc. This instrument is very well su suited to that analysis, as well as incorporating uh, various capabilities in terms of automation that really streamline the analysis, make it very easy for a user to quickly analyze uh, several regions of interest. So QA, QC? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the Spotlight 200 system is typically used in situations where customers are able to uh, visibly pick out debris from uh, the manufacturing process. The Spotlight 400 employs what we call at Perkin Elmer the duet detector. So this system actually has two detectors in the vessel, 
a linear array detector as well as a single point detector similar to the Spotlight 200. That array detector allows users to actually image the sample chemistry and so for each stage position on their sample they actually get 16 spectra from the system. Now in this example here we're looking at a cross-sectional analysis of a multi-layer package here. So this consumer product is used to house uh, coffee in a single serve pack and we see from the infrared image with the ATR imaging accessory that this package is actually quite complex. There are multiple layers comprised of multiple different polymeric materials and each of which is critically important to the performance of the finished package because each performs a specific function. The inner layer is approved for contact with food and the layers in between in this sort of sandwich assembly uh, protect the product integrity while also providing uh, mechanical rigidity. So how many layers in this particular uh, image that we're looking at here? Six layers. Six. Yes. And, and as, I, as, as we've run many different packaging materials, I understand a ketchup, a lot of the ketchup bottles, the plastic bottles, they have, I think, what, 16 layers? Quite a few layers in many packages. Some of these are very unassuming products, but when you perform in infrared imaging on those uh, samples, it really brings out the details. Perfect. Thank you, Ryan. No problem. Thank you for visiting, Jill. One of the other things I wanted to mention, as you can see here, we have a camera in this lab. All the labs that you saw today have a similar camera located in the lab which actually allows us to virtually give demonstrations. So customers that in this pandemic um, that don't want to travel but want to see equipment, get demonstrations, we can actually give a virtual demonstration of any of the instruments that you saw here today. And that is due to these cameras that we have in these labs. We're here to talk about Perkin Elmer's hyphenation capabilities for evolved gas analysis. Evolved gas analysis refers to the detection of gases that are evolved as the material is decomposed, usually in a thermal instrument such as the TGA. So what we have here is a combination of TGA and infrared and the GC mass spec. Now if you think about the kind of information we get from TGA, it's great in the terms that it is quantitative and you get a description of how much of a material is decomposed, but the missing part is you do not know what was that decomposed into. So that question mark is what can be answered by, uh, by what we call as hyphenation, uh, which really is a coupling of multiple analytical techniques into one. Traditionally, if you think of GCMS, they were two separate techniques that were so popular for gas analysis that they have now become ubiquitous with a single technique, GCMS. So now here what we do is, as the material is being decomposed in the TGA as it is heating up and it's breaking down, the gases that are evolved from the material are now transferred to a uh, to infrared cells, the infrared gas cell through what we call as the transfer lines. This is a heated uh, transfer line so that you do not get cold spot as the gas moves from the TGA into the infrared. Now you can get a uh, FTR spectra of the gases, of the gas phase spectra, and the same gases are then moved into a GC where they're separated on a GC column and then detected on the Claris um, uh, mass spec. So this, there are various combinations that are possible uh, this is sort of a full a combination of the TGA, infrared, a GC, and a mass spec. So you can have the full suite or sort of the broken down products. So TGA just with the infrared, that's called as the TGIR hyphenation. Or the TGA, the gases involved from TGA, go directly to a GC or directly to a mass spec. So you can have various combinations, TGIR, TGMS, TGGCMS, um, or the full suite zone here is TGIR, GCMS. Uh, I'll show you a quick example here in the next couple of slides on what the TGIR data will look like and the kind of information you can get from these things. The analysis of gases evolved from material help us address a critical knowledge gap in our understanding of material composition, decomposition behavior, as well as in certain cases, understand upstream processes and processing of the material that have been subjected to. Some of the important application areas have been an analysis of volatiles that off-gas with progressively increasing temperature, detection of reaction byproducts in masking agents, understanding compositional makeup of various drug formulations, moisture analysis, competitive analysis, petrochemical, um, a big area is polymer analysis, um, and et cetera. I've listed a small sampling of applications where hyphenated approaches have been successfully applied. 
And as you can see, these really span various different market types from packaging uh, to life sciences to battery research and even food science. In this example, we consider a powder sample known to retain water. The other components include sugars and some other carbohydrate forms that are added for stabilization purposes. The TGA plot shows weight loss as a function of time, which really for fixed heating rate is essentially synonymous to temperature. As you can see, there are multiple components in this formulation. But how do we accurately identify and measure the contribution of water alone? You know, it cannot be blindly assumed that the first weight loss event is necessarily water. It could very well be a different component in the sample. So the problem really is, what is the specificity of measurement? How do you know that the component you are seeing around 100 or sl slightly over 100 is actually water? When we study the decomposition of the sample with TGIR, we can obtain in real time the gas evolution profile corresponding to the decomposition of each component in the TGA curve. This is shown on the top right image. Moreover, the data can be represented on the same time axis, both on the TGA and on the FTIR. So we can directly correlate what kind of gas species evolved from breakdown of what particular component. The four major peaks are the intensities of gases released from the sample. The bottom right image is what we call as a false color plot of wave number on the y-axis versus time. Again, the time here corresponds to that similar time on the TGA. This false color image provides a visual representation of the range of intensities of the functional groups in evolved gases that are detected by the FTIR. For instance, the dark green solid band at 2380 wave number is for carbon dioxide, which obviously is a known major breakdown product of carbohydrate. The two red arrows under the hump labeled one point towards the intensities broadly in the region of around 3800 wave number and 1500 wave number, which are known band assignments for the OH groups, and in this case from water vapor. So this really provides a quick snapshot view of the range of functional groups in the gaseous sample. Now that we have some inkling of which portion in the TGA and gas absorption spectra is related specifically to water, we can now analyze the individual FTR spectra associated with it. The breadth of data recorded really is a series of individual FTR spectra for every point on the top curve. As you can appreciate, it is indeed a huge area of data that is recorded, as we have impressed in the slide. I've included spectra corresponding to each point on the top curve as well. As we begin to analyze the individual spectra point by point, we can easily point to where the OH plants associated with water vapor start to show and where they end. Now, bear in mind that I referenced 1500 and 3800 wave numbers for the general region showing multiple sharp peaks associated with OH of water vapor. These are not just single bad assignments as these wave numbers, but rather a dense collection of sharp peaks, which is typical in the gaseous phase of the water. In this case, we show that FTR spectra at 1.8 minute where the water bands are just starting to be noticed, label A, and then at 5.1 minute, label B, at which point the water has essentially been driven out. And in fact, you start to notice uh, a small peak at about 2400 wave number, which is typical of carbon dioxide, that is likely from the sugar breakdown. Just to wrap it up uh, in this example, the TGR high finition approach provides a degree of specificity to the TGA measurement for moisture analysis by conclusively identifying water in the gaseous phase and the corresponding time intervals where it has evolved. The weight percent for this water can then be calculated from the TGA curve within the time limits. So in closing, I wanna thank all of you for attending our virtual open house. I hope you enjoyed the tours of the labs, the various talks, learning about our equipment. And again, if you need anything in the future, would like to see any of the equipment, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.